Democracy doesn't happen by accident. We have to renew it with each generation. And this is an urgent matter on all our parts, in my view. Because the data we're seeing is largely pointing in the wrong direction. It's a troubling trend all over our world and most alarmingly right here in the United States. So who better to talk about the preservation of our democracy than two renowned, celebrated, decorated historians who off camera are best friends. And I will be forever grateful that I get to hang out with them both on rare occasion. Back with us tonight, celebrated author, presidential historian Michael Beschloss. His latest work in a bookshelf full of works is Presidents of War. And John Meacham, Pulitzer Prize winning author, presidential historian, the Rogers Chair in the American Presidency at Vanderbilt University. He occasionally advises this current president on historical matters and major speeches. Gentlemen, good evening to you both, my friends. We, we flipped a coin. I'm going to start with the same question to both of you. John, you're first. As long as we've all been alive, uh, in my memory, our presidents have started the State of the Union address with some form of, my fellow Americans, the state of our union is strong. Can we say that right about now, John? I don't think so. Uh, certainly not with uh, candor and with confidence. And that's the problem of the age. You know, democracy is very counterintuitive. This is a human undertaking. We're all fallen. We're all frail. We're all fallible. And what is a democracy but the sum of its parts? The word means the rule of the many. And the rule of the many can lead to complications and chaos. And the remarkable thing about the United States, I think, and I, I think we've all, all three of us have talked about this, is that we've lasted this long. Uh, and I think that, you know, our, our mutual old friend Ben Bradley used to say, when something happened and if he didn't think it was a big deal, he'd say, when the history of the world is written, this isn't going to be in it. Well, the fall of the American Republic, that, that will be in it. And we're 11 months and two days away from the most significant physical assault on our democracy that didn't even happen during the Civil War, right? The electoral count, Winfield Scott sent troops to Washington on the 13th of February, 1861, to make sure secessionists didn't interfere with the electoral count. And nobody got into the Capitol. Well, it did happen this time. And we have to do everything we can uh, in what Michael has rightly called for a long time, longer than I've uh, been uh, on this, uh, in this corner as well, that this is a genuine national emergency. Michael Beschloss, same question. It is, uh, but the genuine national emergency is that Brian Williams is leaving the 11th hour. Uh, so <laughs> let me just say my piece, and then we'll get on to democracy. Two subjects are connected. Uh, Brian, as historians, we know tonight you've had an astounding 28 years at NBC News. Uh, very difficult to believe. Uh, that's a, more than a quarter of the history of the NBC uh, National Broadcasting Company. Uh, more than a third of the length of serious TV news. So this is a large monument to what you do, my friend. And viewers who are watching, we've all watched Brian for all these years, the intelligence, the wisdom, the kindness, the mordant sense of humor, and especially these last five years on the 11th hour at a time of horrible troubles and nightmare oftentimes for our country. Brian, you made this country better at a time we all needed it. Every single night, this has been a course in civics and democracy, in some cases for people who didn't really know how precious and how fragile it was. Every single night, you spoke to pr truth to power in the best democratic tradition. Now, everyone knows how much Brian loves history, certainly John and I do. Uh, you may not know that he collects uh, historical artifacts and letters. Uh, anyone who's watched this program or watched him not only for 28 years, but he was doing other things before he came to NBC, knows that Brian loves the history of presidents, loves the history of cars, and he loves the history of important anniversaries. Now, someone may have noticed that the week he chose to end his run here at the 11th hour in NBC is the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor, I'm sure completely by coincidence, but my <laughs> gift for you tonight, I thought I would look for something appropriate, uh, presidents and cars and anniversaries. 
uh, I'm sending you tomorrow this exact scale model of Franklin Roosevelt's limousine, 1938. As you can see, the hood opens, the doors open. Uh, this is pretty exact. Even the seats go up and down. You'll be getting from that from me soon, uh, Brian, as an addition to your, I know, excellent uh, collection. All I can say is, before we get to the serious, more serious stuff about democracy and the troubles we're having, thank you for from all of us grateful Americans. And I know I speak for John in saying, we can't wait to watch your next chapter as it now opens. Bless you for that, Michael. Thank you very much. It was uh, it was far too generous. All I can say is I've never forgotten that these are the cheap seats. My name is on none of the books on the bookshelves in my house. You two gentlemen are well represented, and that's the difference.